Hey, I'm outside, but I might have screwed up and went upstairs a little too high. Dude, California's freezing. Man. I know, Sacramento is like one loop. Dude, I know there's like nothing on the agenda. I mean, you and I could even risk know, almost I, a night or I something was, if you're up I for was it. Welcome to California. We have left Texas. Guess who we're with today, man? Bearded Bass and Caleb picked us up from the, it wasn't the Sacramento airport, and I'll tell you more on that in just a second. It was the San Francisco airport. What are we doing out here? We're actually filming the next series of Uncharted over on the Catchco channel, and we're making our first pit stop right here at uh, outdoor, the Outdoor Sportsman Tackle Shop, man. First order of business on the Cali trip. So over the next couple days, we're gonna be taking care of that series. We're gonna be filming with uh, Mindak, Bearded Bassin, and myself. And uh, what I'm gonna do for my channel is hopefully just give you guys a little bit of behind the scenes, as much as I can film, uh, as much as possible, and showcase a little bit of uh, what the California Delta and Clear Lake has to offer. Those are our intended fisheries we're gonna be hitting. So let's go ahead and see if we can find some tackle. Sounds like we're gonna be doing some flipping out here, probably some frogging. So you guys know we just bought that SLX MGL so we can have a dedicated reel for this type of stuff as well as the fact we're gonna be needing some heavy weights, man. Heavier stuff than you guys have ever seen us throw on the channel. I think an ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half. I mean big stuff to get through these grass, uh, you wouldn't call them pads, what would you call them? Grass, what, do you, what, what would you call them? Grass mats. So we're gonna grab some heavy artillery here and we'll catch up with you guys in just a second, let you know what we purchased for the trip. Right off the bat, I'm noticing this is not my local tackle shop right here. <laughs> I'm noticing, I'm noticing we got a little salt water compliant rigs out here. <laughs> Yo, the big old Kitex. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they don't have this at the tackle shops by us, man. That's only 25 bucks, this is a bargain. Come at me with these $200 baits I find. And look, Callie's got the hookup. Hold on a second. Watermelon red. I don't know, do you have a preference? I, I have zero preference. Okay. Nope, zero preference. What's up with the camera? YouTube channel. Nice. But we're out here filming a series for Catch Code. I don't know if you're familiar with Catch Company. All right, y'all, so as expected, we just kind of got the basics. We grabbed some flipping hooks. We got some four aughts and some three aughts. The basic, okay, so your man, so Caleb, here we are talking about reels on the way over here, and I'm telling him about how much we love our Tranks 200s. He ends up walking out with a Tranks 200. <laughs> so I feel like I influenced his decision on buying a new reel today, when maybe he didn't have to, but then he tells me, he's like, no, I actually, I need to like expand my arsenal, and uh, I think he's got a handful of reels that he needs to replace, so he's like, dude, I need to buy like eight more reels right now anyway, so I feel good. Anyways, we got about like four one and a half ounce tungsten flipping weights, y'all as well as a couple flipping skirts or punch skirts. What do you punch call them? Skirts. Punch skirts. Yep, I, I never use punch skirts. It's not like I've never heard of them before, but I just haven't used them. And then we got some flipping hooks, we got some troll car goodies. And I think we're about ready to hit the water. We might do some preliminary fishing, some pre-fishing, because here's, here's the thing, y'all. We're fishing this series with Mendak Outdoors. We're also fishing it with Bearded Bassin. We're fishing with myself, but only two of us are in California right now. What happened is, right. well, I woke up this morning to a text from Bryant. He's like, dude, our flight got canceled. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, no way. How could it have gotten canceled? Because there's not like bad weather out here or nothing. But you know, I think I understand it's all the, the COVID madness, and I think employees are getting overworked now that, that maybe are some of the few people that are available to work. And now there's just so many flights getting canceled because there's essentially a shortage, a shortage of staff, right? Whether it be like the pilots, the flight attendants, etc. So we all got our flights canceled. We were all supposed to be here today and start filming. We're not gonna be able to until tomorrow now. So Caleb and I, since I was able to not just change my flight, but I had kind of more options flying out of Dallas-Fort Worth than the other two guys did, I was able to get another flight. We are no longer canceled. We are out here yeah. and we're able to hit the water tonight. And again, just kind of do a little bit of pre-fishing so we can get ready for this full-on series and this full send over the next few days and really just uh, tear them up, man. I'm looking forward to getting out on the boat with Caleb for the first time. It's gonna be a blast. You can show me the ropes, how you fish the Delta, and then maybe we'll kind of game plan the whole Clear Lake idea, what we're gonna be throwing out there. Maybe you can give us some pointers. He said we might go a little bit more finessey. It's gonna be a lot different than this whole Delta game. So, got a lot to look forward to, man. Just stick around, stay tuned. We got a lot of fishing coming up. I don't know what I'm gonna be able to film and show you guys behind the scenes and what I'm not gonna be able to, but it'll be a lot of fun regardless. So, let's go grab some lunch. Absolutely. 
All right, man, we made it to uh, grab the boat successfully. He's filling her up with uh, $4 and uh, like 20 cent gas. It's a little bit more expensive than Texas, just by a couple bucks per gallon. Anyways, we're gonna head into the gas station, grab some drinks, grab some goods, and then we're gonna hit the water, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and get to it. I feel like I'm bringing my whole life with me right now. I got the camera gear back in this backpack. Fresh off the plane, man. I don't have time to be sorting and organizing. We gotta hit the water. We're in the middle of the road right now trying to get this boat prepped and ready. Got a couple reels, got the coffee, and Caleb is rigging up his camera gear right up front, man. Let's roll. There we go. Now he said she should be running. Oh yeah, we're good. Your first look at the Delta on the trip. I am pretty stoked. I don't know if we're going this way or that way, but we about to find out. <laughs> that was nuts, man. Woo! All right, that was a ride. Looks like we have made it to spot number one. I think it's time to cast a line. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are out here on the California Delta and uh, teaching Weston a little trick that we do out here called punching. It's probably one of the funnest techniques out here to catch large fish. Um, we're just gonna show you just the basic rib rig up um, of how we do this. So first things first, you're gonna start with a little black bobber stop. Um, Weston's throwing this on 50 pound braid, I believe. Yep probably should be on 65 we're just gonna not horse them to the boat um, and one trick I like to do is do double bobber stoppers because two just ensures that that weight isn't gonna move um, so then from there we go weight we got a one and a half ounce tungsten weight just to get down through this thick stuff a little bit easier we're gonna be putting a punch strip on uh, this represents just a little bit bigger of a bait profile um, to elicit those bigger strikes and those bigger fish. So we're going to give him every opportunity we can to catch big California Delta. Giant. This is the key right here. We're putting a 4 aught trocar, big fat hook on the end, um, and we're going to be tying it with an improved snail knot. And we'll show you afterwards why we do that. So it's pretty simple. Hook facing down. Put it through the eye, pull the tagline out back, put your thumb right here over the base, make a little loop, and you're just going to wrap it around four times. One, two, three, four. And you're going to go ahead and take this tagline, run it back through the loop. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to leave just a little bit longer tagline than you're normally used to, just in case that braid slips. You got a little peace of mind when setting the hook. And so the reason why we rigged this snail is that whenever you put pressure and set the hook, that hook pops out and is able to hook that fish in thick cover. Okay, that's crazy, man. We're getting shown the ropes out here. <laughs> this is how they do it out west, man. We're used to the southern tactics. Well, uh, you, you know, the guys out in Texas punch too, but of course, I, I haven't done too much of it on the channel. I haven't gotten caught up in too much thick stuff. You know, for the longest time, we we're just kind of bank fishing, right? Hitting some ponds. Now that we've got the boat, we've got some opportunity to kind of fish some thick stuff from the boat edge, and I think it's going to make a big difference, and we'll probably be incorporating this tactic more often than not. So, thank you, Caleb, for all the uh, help right there. We're going to go ahead and get this thing in the water now, make our first few casts. It looks like He's got a choice plastic for us, oh, yeah. and we're gonna get to work. Missile Bates D bomb. Yep. Missile Bates D bomb. <laughs> hey, let's go. You're gonna start with a moving bait, so. Like so a bait or well, well, I'll do what you do. Yeah, yeah. I let's cover some water. So here, um, whatever you think is. I'm just got. I've just got braid on all my stuff, and I'm fine okay. throwing it in this clarity anyway. Oh, so yeah. just you just hand me whatever you think will work, and I'll tie it on. Oh man. I mean, Shad does good in my area, but I saw you throwing yeah, red. Red. Red's uh, better. Red's probably better. Oh, thought he had one. I know how this goes, y'all. I'm not new to this. It's called it's called beginner's luck. I'm gonna tie this on ten minutes after he's been making casts. He's gonna be like <laughs> firing away, and then I somehow get lucky, <laughs> or maybe I just get skunked. It wouldn't be any different than my Texas oh, videos no, no. then. You're not getting skunked. <laughs> Caleb says there's no way we're getting skunked. I like the confidence. All right, starting off with a little bubonic goodness. Let's see what we got here. I think I might get a bird's nest on this first cast, and then I should be bird's nest free after this fool clears up. Little maintenance cast, and he's on. He's on. Is it a striper? Oh wow, not even a largey for you guys at home. I like this little point though, this is nice. Oh, I'm hitting that grass too. Perfect diving depth, yeah. What you wanna do is you wanna throw it on 50 pound braid out here, y'all. You don't want the 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon, you'd be going too deep then. <laughs> you want straight braid. It really helps with those treble hooks. <laughs> do I have, I got grass, <laughs> I'm like it pulled back. Kayla's just up there moving the boat. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'll check it. 
Yeah, that's one thing with uh, with this is it seems like you do want to be quick about it, huh? Yeah, because as soon as they feel that... Yeah, that freaking... Yeah, yeah. They're, they're quick. Oh, no. I don't know, man. That was That's a tough... That was a tough one to judge. <laughs> that felt pretty good. Yeah, just a little... Yeah, it did feel like a thump. It wasn't like a subtle, like, just heavy. So, tough to say. So you want that plastic up and like pretty much, yeah, like completely it. out. Right here, you yeah, want yeah, that you like want that hooked out. on, yeah. I got you. Okay. Ooh, all right, that had potential. <laughs> These fucking cheap jackhammers. <laughs> oh, is that another one? There we go. Okay, rebate. We got a rebate. We found him. Chatterbait. I can flip him on 12 pound because he's not the giant. But oh gosh, dang. Oh, 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 oh. Chill. Hey, chill. Chill. Wow. I got a chatterbait in the neck and everything. <laughs> First one for me, man, it feels pretty good. Look at how dark green they are, man. They are down in the grass, but he decided to come out for it and chase that blade of the old chatterbatter. Ain't nothing to it, ladies and gents. Just a few hours hard work. <laughs> It'll be easy, Caleb said. <laughs> a handful of hours in and then two fish in one minute. So I can, I can deal with that. Let's see what else we got back here, y'all. Yeah, this is looking real. This is looking like big swim bait type. Dude, we could draw some bigs up right now. Got gotcha, you, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Punch it out in Cali. And how does this happen every time I catch a fish? What is going on, kids? Dude, keep his boat clean, man. We're a guest That's out here. So Caleb just made a good point. We've been missing a lot of hook sets, y'all. And he's like, well, this is probably why we're missing them because they're this big. <laughs> there hasn't been just a, a big one slam it. Oh, speaking of, ooh, you set the hook hard on these guys out here when you're using this technique. That one ounce weight said peace out to his upper lip. I'm gonna go ahead and let him recover. We'll see you next year when you're a little bit bigger, son. Big shout out to Bearded Bass, and y'all check him out in the description for hooking us up with the setup right here. Let's see if we can figure out this punching skirt now. But you've caught some stuff on this, not this exact one, okay. All right, y'all, Caleb's got a bunch of rigs on this thing, and check us out. We're throwing a custom painted swim bait by his brother. It looks like a little mini salmon or <laughs> it's got like the trout colorations, but like the, the head almost makes it look like a little salmon right here. I'm gonna go over you and then a little casty cast. Oh, got him. Oh, oh no mug. Yeah? Yeah, he came up for it. It wasn't a big one though, two pounds probably. Right in front, sir, chatterbait, follow it up. <laughs> All right, y'all, first bite on the big bait, man. You're not feeling the frog in here? Like that. Oh, oh, it? Yeah. Wow, that thing falls fast. <laughs> Holy smokes. When it's not falling through the thick stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could probably get away with an ounce on this stuff. Nope. No, no, no. no. It, was one, it was one of those where it's like, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it to see. Yeah, that nine pounder I caught was one of those. I was like, something felt different. Yeah. Like, I didn't feel a bite or nothing, but I was like, I gotta check it. Yeah. Smart move. Oh, what oh, the heck what? just, what the heck just happened? He hit it like a topwater. I was bringing it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That wasn't a big one. No. That God. wasn't a big one. That was a, it was a bluegill. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? I thought I actually had him on the hook though. So I was like, I was kind of trying to lean in because I'm like, okay, he bit it. He's got it. You know, sometimes you just get lucky with how they hit it. Nope. Ladies and gentlemen, punching with Weston Smith. <laughs> <laughs> All you gotta do is don't even let it hit the bottom, just start reeling it back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
All right, I think we just made one of the last runs for the evening. It's 7.30 at night, and we're in a spot that I, I believe is almost unfishable. It definitely looks to be unfishable during low tide, but the tide is creeping up on us, and it influences the fishing out here so much. It's nothing like our ponds and lakes down south. Uh, <laughs> this river system really relies on that tide, but definitely the fishing gets better with that higher tide, it seems like. It pushes more water in here. It usually drives the bass, from what I understand, to start feeding up shallow on the bait fish, and so it seems like it might be an easier bit of a bite. So this is kind of timing perfect with the sunset. Uh, at least the sun's getting low right on the horizon, and so we're going to switch to top water with throwing popping frogs, and the current is like ripping. You can hardly tell. It's like a light breeze back here, but your frog is like literally just drifting <laughs> as you try and pop it back to the boat. It's pretty comical, but anyways, that's besides the point. Hopefully we can catch a few fish over here, get some top water in the evening, probably go for the biggest fish of the day. And that'll probably wrap up everything behind the scenes for Uncharted on day one, fishing the Delta and soon to be clear like you guys stick around for the rest. Let's see if we can put some more fish in the boat. Oh! <laughs> no, I decided to set the hook right away. <laughs> that was a giant, bro. That one wasn't. That was a baby. That was a baby. Okay. Did you see the slurp? It was a pretty good splash. Then why didn't he eat it? <laughs> I thought you just didn't set the hook. I, I mean, I didn't right away. It took a minute. Yeah, it did take a minute. I was giving them time, you know? They like to eat it. Dude, like oh, what, what the hell? What? Yeah, but that was not. I don't. I honestly don't even know if that was bass. And I set the hook okay. quick. Okay. It was not. It was not big. It was like something small. Tried to slurp it. It wasn't eligible. Dude, I should. Oh. Well, I even contemplated a shift, but yeah, you did. <laughs> Oh, just need a little oh, distraction. He came, off. He, came off. he came off. No, he didn't. <laughs> Is that the first frog fish of the day? <laughs> After how many? Wow. Uh, just one or two. <laughs> no. Missed it. Yeah, missed it. Good one. Uh, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Got him. Yes. I was I was thinking with that grass it looked okay for a second. <laughs> One kid was like, dude, I gotta get a picture with both of you. Guys. Oh, right he just got taken under. It was not it was not as big. It's all small See? stuff. It's all small stuff. You guys stop distracting each other. Okay. I'm gonna make it here. Yeah, this is tricky. No, you got it. Ain't no thing. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> See the Google. Ah! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that ain't gonna fly. <laughs> oh. No! He no, he came off! Got him! No! Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. I've had 20 blow ups, <laughs> Dude, I'm in the high teens right now. Go! Oh. <laughs> What is this? It's a duck or something. It's one of those underwater ducks. <laughs> I got canceled. <laughs> I think uh, I think I did catch a decent one on it. I just get so hooked on the whole black and white. Yes, no. Oh. Wow, what a pain. It's not that I miss this many frogfish either, like on a regular basis, right. y'all. I know all the like haters that are watching this one right now are like, this guy sucks. Yeah, but no, it's like, no, it's not like that. You're not, you're not <laughs> it's these, <getting> it's <laughs> these little baby one pounders back here tonight are just, uh, they're finesse biting it. <laughs> Wow. So look, if it wasn't on film, y'all wouldn't believe it. Couple more casts, y'all. I think we're gonna call it. It is getting dark quick, and we got a, we got a decent run back to the ramp. So we'll catch you over there if uh, nothing big happens beforehand. Alright man, back at the ramp, that was a blast. We were just cruising going 72 on the way back over here. Holy smokes, I mean we flying out here in California. We're, I think we're going to grab some dinner and that might be it for day one, you guys. Thank you for joining us. Let's uh, see what else this trip has in store, man. Absolute blast catching some fish today. Ladies and gents, we are back from the Cali trip. Fishing the Delta and Clear Lake was so insane. Caleb really showed us all around the place and we did all that filming for the next Uncharted. This one's going to be off the chain. Be sure to go check out the Catch Code channel down in the description if you want to see it when it comes out, as well as Caleb's channel, aka Bearded Bass, and down in the description he is only posting the finest California Delta fishing videos for you guys, and I know you're gonna love them, but also one more thing. That's right, the new Guggen Squad merch is here, man, and it is fire. You guys have got to get on this drop. We have got some sick designs, y'all, so don't forget to hop on GuggenSquad.com real quick. 
code Weston and grab you some shirts for summer. They're literally so breathable and cooling in the summertime. I'm not even worried about getting sunburned in this thing. It's an absolute must for the Texas heat and probably wherever you're at during the summertime because this stuff will get you. So go ahead, grab you a handful, be prepared for that summer bite, and we'll catch y'all on the next episode. Hopefully, our flights don't get canceled again. Peace. Got you, <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Punch it out in Cali. And how does this happen every time I catch a fish? What is going on, kids? <laughs>